that you have other increase of consumption. One of the, the main factors that affects consumption is disposable income, the amount of money that you can spend to determine your level of consumption. But it is not only disposable income that affects or that determines our level of consumption. There are other factors such as the interest rate. For the interest rate, we talk about the amount of money you have to pay to get to borrow money from the bank. It can also determine the amount of money that is going to be available for you to spend. So I mean, the interest rate makes money become expensive as a result. Also, we might be difficult to borrow more money to finance the project of consumer credit. Furthermore, high rates of interest reduces the value of stocks in the stock market, making the investment easier and, in turn, also promotes loss. An increase in the interest rate makes borrowing becomes expensive. As a result, consumption will fall. And not only that, an increase in interest rate also increases, reduces the value of stocks, shares in the market. As a result, people will not be able to invest like they used to invest. Then because they are unable to invest, they won't have more wealth, they won't have more money to spend. So in increase in interest rate reduces wealth and it reduces consumption. Number two, consumer confidence. Purchases, purchases of consumer goods are not essential items like holiday or other items that are affected by consumer confidence. If consumers expect their situation to become better, if you think that in the future you don't have more money, you can spend it now, your consumption will increase. But if you are expecting your, you're expecting your consumption or your income to fall, or maybe you think you're going to lose your job in the future, you might not want to spend now, so your consumption will fall. You get it? The third one, the wealth effect. For wealth effect, the wealth of the household is of two parts. We have the physical wealth and the monetary wealth. When we talk about physical wealth, we're talking about house, cars, land, these are physical wealth. And when we talk about monetary, we're talking about your shares, your pension rights, your life assurance policies, and the cash you have or the money you have in the financial institution. So if the wealth of a household increases, consumption will increase. If your wealth increases either physical or monetary, your consumption will increase. That's what we call wealth effects. So the next one is availability of credit. The rate of interest rate is the rate of interest determines the price of credit. If the interest rate is low, the credit price becomes cheaper and household consumption will increase. If interest rate is less, you can borrow as much as possible. So you can have a lot of credit on your credit card. You can have a lot of money borrowed from your credit card because the interest rate is less. But if, it, if the interest rate is high, you won't want to use your credit card as a result of your consumption will fall. The next one is inflation. When you talk about inflation, we're talking about the general rise in the price level. If inflation increases in the economy, consumers would, want, would not want to spend. So here I said, an increase in the general price level reduces the value of money. Why? The amount of money you have today would not be enough to buy what you used to buy yesterday. That is inflation. So the value of money will drop. As a result, this might this, might, this means consumption might fall. The value of what you consume will fall. Having said this, households might forward their purchases increasing consumption. But if you think, if you are expecting the, the price of goods and services to increase in the future, you might want to buy them now. That's what, that's what we call forward purchasing. So you forward your purchases because you are expecting the prices to be too high or to increase in the future. At that point in time, consumption increases right now because you think prices will rise in the future. So if they expect prices to rise in the future, spending might fall to restore the value of money. So you are buying now because you don't want to buy it in the future. As a result of not holding back to buy in the future, you don't spend in the future, the value of the money comes back. Because at that point in time, nobody is seeing money. Money is not in supply. And when money is not in circulation, the value of the money becomes appreciated. It increases. It is what you have that doesn't have value. What you don't have, you look for it, you, look, you search, you continue to search for it. As a result of that, it increases its value. So consumers might increase consumption now because they are expecting the price of goods and services to rise in the future. That is inflation. Consumers might stop buying right now because the price of what increases. That is also what inflation. So inflation can forward your purchases to the future by increasing your consumption now. Because you don't want to buy when the price increases. But they might tell you that the price of goods will increase next month. You want to buy those things now. So your consumption will increase now because you want to restore the value of your money in the future. Is it clear? And the last one, the composition of household. The age category you belong will determine the amount of money you spend. 
Young people and old people, they, they are likely to spend more than middle-aged people. Because middle-aged people think about investment. Do you understand? As a young boy, as a young person, what you want to do is you want to enjoy yourself, you want to enjoy your life. But when you are in the middle age, at that point in time, you want to have a family, you want to be responsible. So you spend, you are likely to invest more than spend in the middle age. But your old age, then you want to enjoy life again. You spend on uh, you spend on health care and the rest. At that point in time, your spending also increases. So young and old, they spend more. Middle age, they spend more on investment goods, capital goods, than consumer goods. Is it clear? So these are the factors that determine consumption as size income. Income is also a factor that determines disposable income is a factor that determines your level of consumption because the amount of money that is available for you to spend or save will determine the amount of money you can spend that will determine your consumption. So aside from disposable income, we have interest rates, we have consumer confidence, we have wealth index, we have uh, availability of credit, inflation and composition of the good or age that you belong. These are the determinants of consumption and this means consumption.